One of the most important uh, pro uh, processes when we code is to debug our code. Now, debugging has a funny story that started like, uh, from what I heard at least, uh, that uh, uh, once in a very, within a very old computer, uh, some time ago, uh, there was a problem with the computer and uh, a group of engineers tried to fi figure out what the problem was. And they opened the computer and they find inside a bug uh, that actually was creating problems with the circuits. So they actually named this process uh, debugging because they removed the bug that was inside the circuits. Now, even though the, the term debugging didn't become very popular with uh, engineers, computer engineers, it became very popular with software developers. And nowadays, uh, we use the term bug to, uh, to refer to any kind of problem that an application may have. Uh, Faro happens to have a, a very specialized tool that we can find also in other programming languages called a debugger, which is exactly, it's a tool that will help us uh, find problems, isolate them, and remove them from our code. But the debugger in Faro can be used for many other things as well. Now, let's see a very simple example. Now, if we remember the, the previous tutorial, I've used GDSpotter to find, uh, to find uh, classes and methods. Now, one of the classes that I want to understand in this case is uh, the dialog window. Uh, the dialog window class is a class that displays, as you could expect, a dialog window. Uh, in order to find this uh, class and in order to actually see how this kind of class initializes itself, so how exactly it prepares itself, what kind of instance variables it in, in, initiates, what kind of methods it executes in order to do to understand the deep mechanics of the dialog window, we're going to use the debugger. Now, first, let's find the class. We use command enter, or as you remember from the previous tutorial, command is alt for Windows and Linux. Command enter to find uh, the dialog window. Dialog window. So we found here a dialog window. Now, one of the things that I didn't show in the previous tutorial for this Potter is that we can also uh, find individual methods. So if uh, individual methods out of a specific search result, which is for a specific class. So in order to do that, we use the command and right arrow key. It's going to take us to the instance methods and the instance variables of this class. And of course, command is alt for Windows and Linux as said. And uh, shift command right arrow, which I explained in the previous tutorial, is for displaying all the results. So if I go here, and I press initialize, I can actually refine my search. So you can see here it says dialog window, instance methods, initialized, and click enter in the first choice. It's going to show me the initialized method. Now, one of the things that we want to do here is because we don't actually do any debugging. We don't have an actual bug and we want to remove it with this class. But what we want to do is to trigger the debugger so the debugger actually shows us the whole process of execution inside this class. So we can see which kind of methods are called and which uh, uh, variables are changed and how they are changed and to generally take, get a good idea of what this object really does. So in order to do that, we use a very simple method, which it, it is, I have added here, it's self-hold. So self-hold, all it does, it says stop here the execution and open me the debugger inside this method. So this is exactly what it's going to do. So in order to do this, and in order to trigger this method, all we have to do is go to Playground, which is actually the workspace. If you click on Workspace, it's going to open up Playground, which is actually a workspace for Faro 4. It's a more powerful workspace, uh, but it's exactly the same thing we have actually described with the uh, workspace for Faro 3. So all you have to do is create a, a workspace variable and assign it the instance of the dialog window. So if we do this and click Do It, now, we see that a new window appears. This window is the debugger. So this window is giving us some options. The first one is to proceed. Uh, so we continue like the error didn't happen, uh, or this, in this case, the halt. Uh, so we can ignore the halt and proceed with the execution. Uh, abandon. In this case, we are going to abandon, and we will, not, we will uh, exit the debugger, but nothing will happen. Uh, our execution will not continue. And debug. We'll open the debugger and report. I don't remember this. I don't have used this. So let's 
use debug and this window is the debugger. So let's explain what happens here. As you can see here, it's already highlighted the kind of message it stopped. So it has stopped in this message. If it was, was another, any kind of uh, error or message not understood, it also would have done the same thing. So the workflow we explained here is for uh, using hold and also for, uh, uh, for uh, dealing with regular problems and regular errors inside Faro we may have in, with our own code with, or with some other library. So we have some uh, different kinds of uh, options here. The first option is to proceed. Now, if we do proceed, the code will continue as nothing has happened. So it's going to ignore the halt and continue executing the code. But we don't really want to do this because if we do this, we will exit the debugger. So we want to continue being the debugger and navigate using the debugger. Now, the first thing we see here is that it displays us our initialize method. It displays the messages that are called inside the CLI method. And here it shows us uh, the hierarchy chain of the code. So the first one here is the do it. This is actually the code we actually said to do it. The previous thing you see here is actually uh, the interaction with uh, the morph, with the word morph, which is actually the graphical user interface of R. So anything you see here is actually what the graphical interface, all the action of the graphical interface that led to the do it and also some kind of uh, preparation from a compiler, which here is using the evaluate to evaluate your code. So we don't really care for what happens before that, because this is actually eternal stuff that, that uh, Faro is doing in order to execute our code. What we care is what happens above that. So when we go here, we see that we are inside an initialize method. Now, there are some very nice things here we can use. Let me resize bit the windows. So here are the instance variables of this class. Now, you may see that there are actually quite a lot of instance variables. Now, these instance variables are not just the instance variables that the class has, but they are also all the inherited instance variables. Now, if you have actually watched the tutorial on inheritance, you will know that when we inherit from a class, all the methods and all the variables are also inherited. So that means that we will be able to access them from this object. And sure enough, we have here many of those uh, instance variables actually come from the morph class. And of course, there are other classes that uh, if you go here and see it, there are other classes, for example, system window that a dialog window inherits from. So we can actually see here, uh, if you click here, we see uh, the instance variables and the values they have inside them. So this is actually a very nice way to see not just what kind of code is executed, but the state of the code. So we actually can see inside the variables and see the values and how those methods change those values, how they change those variables. Now, this is the one side with the instance variables. Now, the other side is the, uh, the context, what is contained inside our method. Now, in this method, of course, there's a local context and we have here uh, the context. Again, it's the method. And then we have an empty stack and all a table variables because we don't have number of variables, we don't see anything. But with the did, we were able to see something. So let's see what we can do here. Now, there are actually two, uh, well, we have, uh, I think, three options. Now, three options here is restart into and over. Now, restart is going to restart the method. This is actually very useful because the debugger has a very powerful feature we will not find in other debuggers and other program launches. And that is the ability to change the code. So I, I can go in here and here and start adding stuff if I want any kind of code. And all I have is to do is right click and accept it. And then if I restart the method, then the method will be executed with this code that I have added. This is very, very flexible if you want to correct your errors quickly and you don't want to reopen the system browser, you don't want to have to restart your objects, you change the method immediately and the live objects you have created actually use this compile method because each time we change the method and we accept it, it is compiled and is uploaded in all instances. So in these cases, it's going to upload in all instances. But we don't want to change the code in this case. What we want to do is go to the next, which is the super initialize. Now, in order to do that, we use over. So now here, it's going to go to the next step, which is super initialize, which is the next 
methods of the call here. Now, we want to actually go inside this super initialized and see what kind of initialized method the, the super class has. Super class, remember from inheritance, is the class we inherit from. So in this case, it's going to be dialog window. So it's going into, and sure enough, we see here it says dialog window, standard window. So it now says us, in, I'm inside standard window, that is from where dialog window inherits. And I see here other, also another super initialize, which of course is going to initialize uh, uh, the, 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 the super class. It's going to be the, the sorry, initialize method of the super class. And we can do the same code using the into. When we use into, what it does is actually executes the code, but it sends us inside the method that allows us to step inside the method and do step by step each of the code. But we don't want to do that. I don't want to you know, go into every initialize method in the inheritance. I'm going to do an over, 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 over. And if I hit over again, then I see that I have finished with the super analyze. So I have seen the methods that have been called in the uh, super class. Now I want to see what kind of methods are called here. So let's go doing uh, again over. And now I see here that the method is called cancel. Now, what exactly this kind of method is? How I can look into it? I'm going to use into. Now I'm going to sign into, and then I see that cancel is taking an object as an argument, and it sets a cancel variable with this object. So it assigns this actually object to the, to the instant variable canceled. So let's see if, if I can find a variable canceled. Here the variable is canceled. Now if you see here, even though it says assign, we have a nil value. Why? Because we haven't actually executed this code already. But if you go to the temporary uh, uh, the, the, the area for the temporary context, which is the, the context of the, uh, of the method, and we see here all the uh, temporary variables, we can also see there is also a stack top. Now, what is this stack top? Stack top is actually the values that we pass. So here, the cancel method, it has been called and it has been passed a specific uh, value. What is this value? This value is true. If you go here to an object, which is also is it's rated as an instance as a, uh, sorry as a method variable. Uh, it's uh, of course this, the, the the difference here is that actually it replaces it with a value. It is not exactly a variable in a, in in a, in, a, in a specific sense of the word. We see again that this is true. So this is very actually useful because we we actually can see not only the values of the instance variable but also the values that we pass with the method and also the temporal variables that we have here. What kind of values they have. So let's go with over. Now, look at this, what happened. Now, with this over, with the first over, we just went inside the method. So it actually passed the value and started here before executing this. Now, with the next over, we have actually executed this. And what happened? Now, cancel has the value true. If you remember previously, we have the value nil. Because, of course, now it is assigned, it has executed this method. So let's go again over to exit here. Now it says us that it has finished with the method. Let's go to the next over. And now it says add initial panel. Hmm, what this initial panel can be? Okay, let's go again inside this method. And then we see we continue again this workflow. So this is exactly the workflow we can hear here and the things we can do uh, with a, with a debugger, at least on a basic level, it helps us experiment. You can actually go here and change your code. You can try new things. And remember always to restart your methods. So these changes are, uh, are re-executed by uh, your, your object, or less the debugger will uh, consider if you add code here that the code has been executed and will just continue. And we don't want to do that. If you add code here, it's of course better to restart. And uh, this is all I want to describe for a uh, debugger for this tutorial. Uh, debugger, of course, has many other features that I haven't actually uh, uh, described. Of course, you get here a right-click menu that has all the usual uh, sp suspects we have used in System Browser and in other tools, but like implementers, inheritance, versions, if you're meant implementers are the ones that uh, when you click on a method, it shows you what kind of methods actually define uh, uh, what kind of methods are with this name? Senders of are the methods that actually send this message. Inheritance is going to show it as the inheritance change, what class inherits from what class. Versions is the version method. This is actually very useful. Versions 
It means that if you have an old version of the method, you have changed with the debugger and you want to change it back, again, the same thing with Instant Browser. You can use the version to change back to the previous version of your method. And of course, you can always use uh, a browser. And if you go here and click Browse, it's going to tell you add initial panel and it's, you have a browser opened in this case. So what, this is all what I want to describe uh, for now for the debugger. I will follow with other tutorial, video, uh, video tutorials for debugger as well, which is a very powerful tool and there's many things I can show you with them. For now, just experiment what I have showed and as always, have fun with Faro.